that generation your husband will impregnate somebody and he will go and call his family the aunties people you have not seen in years so they will come and sit down one, 6 a.m you are still in your pajamas where is mama ah, welcome sir welcome, welcome. Um, should we sh what should i offer you ah we're not here to eat ah, we are moena we know you you are very hospitable sit down there's a family matter and you saw this girl so you are wondering did my children fight or what happened i said mm -mm -mm -mm. um already a bit speak head of the family it's you they will even hail him at you know you have been you have been sorting these things since uh how old are these you will live long sir i <laughs> mean me. please uh, talk <clears throat> you are busy um your material cannot become true <laughs> your material cannot become true or your possession cannot become true and then you are angry we notice that now that you've you've done well in this family oh you've done well and you are now aging so we know you need assistance <laughs> and you know we are all human beings there's no way you will walk and your head will not shake <laughs> And you are wondering where are they going in this matter? Um, you know your husband is a good man. You even told us that he's a good man. He takes care of you. But well, you know anybody can make mistake. Only God is perfect. <laughs> By this time, you have watched enough African movies to know where they are going. I spoke before when you were not there that I know you. You are not in me. Will not be angry. Oh well, yeah, you two come. Kneel down. This is now your junior wife. <laughs> Just like that. Structure generation answer you. What can you do? And nothing must do that girl. They will call you a witch. You be the one. <laughs> they come. Our husband is calling you. <laughs> and they will bring the third one. Because when a man can marry the second wife, he can marry the fourteenth. Yeah. Polygamy is a spirit. Yeah. That's why Proverbs chapter 5, Proverbs chapter 6, don't even try it. Don't price what you don't want to buy. Don't smell what you don't want to eat. Adultery is a spirit. Can a man carry fire in his bones and not be burnt? In his bosom and not be burnt? By reason of adultery, a man is reduced not to a bakery, but a piece, not even a loaf, a piece of bread. It is in the evening of your life that these regrets show up very well. Adultery is evil. In my village, they call it Agberi, collector of profit. Adultery, don't even try it, please. Trust God for strength. Men, I know you like variety. That's why a woman must always be different things to her husband at every time. Today it is uh, long cut. Tomorrow it is a uh, boo-boo. Next tomorrow it is jeans. You must be unpredictable as a married woman. Because men like variety. <laughs> you cannot be wearing round boo and be, and be eating 11 p.m. You are still eating by the young man. Then my day is looking at me. I have a few children. To a man, you are his bride. And he goes out and he sees a lot. In church, he sees a lot. He should come home and meet a bride, not an old cargo that looks like a panel beating Volkswagen car. <laughs> There's no excuse for adultery, but please help your husband. Men are attracted by what they see. Let him see well. Cannot be carrying heavy tummy, heavy bum bum, heavy breast, heavy everything everywhere. And you're not doing anything about it. You can be fat but smart. Yeah. Be beautiful. Stop tying wrap on your breast every time. Comb your hair. Perfume your body. Perfume your bed. Don't let your bed be in the same shape since creation of Abuja State. Or what do you call this place? <laughs> the same way. Your kitchen the same. Everything the same. Nothing moves. Nothing changes. And now you're always nagging. You're pushing the man out. Protect him. Shoot him. You, you are his helper. The same Greek word. 
Parakletos for the Holy Spirit was used for you in Genesis 2. Protect him. Be all around him. There is no man that cannot fall. Here in the grace of God we stand. Help him not to fall. By reason of the anointing he carries, virgins are attracted to him. Pastors, leaders, a man is handsome, he's wealthy, he has influence, he has money, he has wealth, he knows what he's doing. Madam, pray. Oh. I'm married to one, so I know what I'm talking about. There are people in the church. There are people in his office wishing you dead. Raising altars against you. Greeting you, but wondering why you are still alive. That's what you call ill will, just like you have good will. They, didn't, they don't care that you suffered with the man. That's history. In fact, some demon-possessed girls now, they are looking for married men. They say, the men are experienced. They know how to handle girls, women. What is not good needs prayer, but it is what is good that needs more prayer. Pray. The structured generation. And that's why many of us are, that's where many of us are coming from. The people that trained us, that's, that's that generation. Some of them are still alive. Sometimes I would say to my mother, ah, ah, the, the slab, you know there were different, different kinds of slab. Some, the slab you are looking for, where it came from. <laughs> just like that, what happened? What did I say? Some, stars will just come out of your back. Some water tears will just be dropping. You are not the one producing, but yes, it is. <laughs> some slabs will make you spin. <laughs> then you say, Be nice. <sighs> they realize it's your mother because you'll be hearing her voice in the dis distance. <laughs> She's walking away to even make matters worse. She will stay there and say, If you cry. <laughs> How can you beat me and tell me not to cry? So I do it. <laughs> if I... <laughs> and some fathers still do that with their children because of the person that raised you. David was fantastic, but he didn't get it right in his family life because of the person that mentored him. Samuel. It was because of Samuel that Israel asked for a king because of his children. Samuel did not get it right in his family life because of his mentor, Eli. And that's our generation. We, we are the in-between generation. Between our parents and our children. Our parents and our guardians handed over to us. This our generation. We believed what our parents told us. We believed what our pastor said. We didn't bother to question. I said, woman, as you are going now, you don't have any room here again, no? Go to your husband's house. You cannot come back here. So even when you are dying in the marriage, do you remember that on your wedding night, they told you that you don't have a room anymore. You stay there. And then your pastor that was raised the same way you were raised tells you, I think the next thing now is three days fast. Pray. The covenant of life is superior to the covenant of marriage. As you raise your girls, pump possibility into them. Empower them. Let them know that they can always trust you. Teach them to prosper. Teach them to be financially independent. The times have changed. You're not teaching them against their husbands. No. Do you know that in some countries now they are teaching little girls, karate, what do you call it? How to defend themselves in case of rape. Fathers, we need you in your daughter's lives. Please, let your child know that she can run to you. Give her correct training. 
But in case, I saw one video that was viral. This Chinese man said to the husband, I'm giving this girl to you intact. In case you change your mind, please return her. If not, fathers, you need to be present in your daughter's lives. Wake up, oh, the times have changed. You may be like this, but it's not everybody that is like that. Your heart may be good. You wish them well, but it's not everybody. So please protect your children. That's our generation. <laughs> the hand over generation. We believed it because our parents said so. A woman should not ask for sex. Our generation. Otherwise, you will be considered a prostitute. Our generation. So even as our children are getting married, we cannot tell them, you are free to ask for sex from your husband. We don't even know how to say it. Just as a, even me as a preacher, you will see me using style to say, in case you want sex as a woman, tell your husband, can we have a flight to Jerusalem? <laughs> <laughs> because I, I'm not even bold enough to say, ask your husband for sex, because that's how we were raised. The literate of the 21st century. And not the people that cannot read or write. And the people that cannot unlearn. Like Pastor T was saying today, you did dreadlock. <laughs> or, where we grew up, we don't sit like this in church. Sisters, brothers. And we used to say once on Pastor T, we remember, my hands are filled with the blessings of God. Anyone I touch, once you stretch and you say, bro, mm, you, you, you go and go touch a woman. You are in courtship. You call it dating now. You go and visit. You don't visit alone, but in case you go to visit, the court is every You meet on the field. That's where we're coming from. And this thing, this thing, I didn't wear jewelries or makeup for 10 years. The first time I put on a tiny stud, my husband said, you look like a woman. This thing sometimes doesn't leave us. That's why, so I can't, sometimes, up till now, when I wear sleeveless, I'm still feeling, because they told us, as a sin. And when I wear sleeveless, I feel good, I have fresh air. But I remember what they told me, so I'll be doing like this. <laughs> You don't know how conditioned you are until you start excavating. They told us you cannot ask your husband for sex. That thing is still there. You cannot be groaning when the man is sleeping with you because it will look like. So even when you are enjoying it, you say, like, <laughs> <laughs> And Woman, woman told me in England, Mrs. Adejumo, I know you talk to a woman. Can you please? It's a, she has sent me an email. Oh. Anytime I want to touch my wife, she's praying in tongues. It's where she's coming from. That's how they taught us. In fact, they taught us that if first lady visits me and I'm seeing her off, once I step out of my room, I must tie my scarf. That's how they taught us so. Oh. So if I forget, I will run back and take it. So when your husband is sleeping with you, you are still saying, my scarf, my scarf, scarf, scarf. <laughs> this thing doesn't leave us on time. So we have to be on learning. And on learning. Ah, that thing, where is it coming from? It's what they taught us. They taught us even when they were not speaking. We saw it. Remember modeling. Verbal programming. Even when they were not speaking, they were teaching us. Who are you as a pastor's wife to hold the microphone? They taught us, even when they didn't know that they were teaching us. So please, start unpacking and removing some things. That's why the load you are carrying in the marriage is so heavy. There are unnecessary tools there. Help me tell your neighbor, Eturaka. <laughs> Calm down, relax. Come out some things. Throw them in the garbage so that you can soar. Times have changed. Fathers are now sending their children, their daughters, to correct schools, to get education. 
And now in your low self-esteem and insecurity, you are telling you, you cannot work. And my husband said, I cannot work. I pity your evening. The husband said, that man hates you. Even if it is working from home, ending something with your life. I don't care how much he has. Let him give you an office in that business. You two, after the children are gone to school, carry your bag. You two work out like a madam. Hi, everybody. Good morning. Good morning. There's a fulfillment it gives you. Yeah. You sit at home. It's all your degrees. He didn't allow me to work. Really? God forbid. If anything happens, if anything happens, madam, <laughs> marriage is not to conscript you. It's about ownership, but it's a form of freedom. Yeah. There is individuality in it. Every time I tell my husband, thank you for allowing me to love God the way I do. Hallelujah. You see the way I worship God in church. Yeah. So last week I said to him, I hope I'm not embarrassing you. The way I'm worshiping God, he said, even me, I'm doing my own. Who is looking? <laughs> be secure enough to let your wife be a same godly woman will not use it against you. Raise your wife from the positive angle. Not, you know, I'm, uh, when you start demanding for respect, you have lost it. Yeah. Don't you know I'm the husband in this house? I'm, uh, calm down. Calm down, you don't understand it. <laughs> Maturity is proximity without familiarity. <laughs> Maturity is proximity without familiarity. As human beings, and this is one of the things that destroy marriages. As human beings, at a point in our lives, if we are not careful, we stop saying what we have been saying. I'll explain. Maturity is family. Beg your pardon. Proximity. Thank you, sir. Without familiarity. As human beings, if we are not careful, we stop saying what we have been saying. Because you are so used to the man. You have seen him finish. You are so used to the woman. You've seen everything in the marriage. 40 years of marriage. So you begin to take things for granted. The man helps you to iron. To even say thank you is a problem. You stop seeing what you have been seeing. The kind man. You now assume. An assumption is the lowest form of knowledge. This is one of the reasons why marriages go south. If you are a father... Please, don't mess up other people's children. Either in the office, or in ministry, or wherever. Isaiah 14, 21. Isaiah 14, 21. Prepare a slaughter for his children. For the iniquity of their fathers, that they rise not. No, I like the King James, it's my old King James's version. Please. Prepare slaughter for his children, for the iniquity of their fathers, that they do not rise. <laughs> it's in the Bible. One woman came that I should pray. Her children were not prospering. And as I laid on the altar with her, the Lord said to me, If not for this woman, I, the Lord, have vowed that the children will not prosper because of the way their father has messed up other people's children. Life is not governed by miracles. Life is governed by principles. Genesis 8.22. Prepare a slaughter for his children for the iniquity of their fathers. You can't be messing up children. You can't be oppressing children. You're supposed to promote somebody, your secretary. You bring the person that is somebody's child. You cannot be sleeping around and aborting for children. They are people's children and expect your own children. Stop disturbing the peace of your home. And those of you that are widows or single parents or your stepmothers, stepfathers and all that. It's a beautiful family. We call your own blended family. You're not inferior to people that are married. No, you're not. You're also in ministry. If you treat those children well, you pray. They may not even reward you, but they are likely to reward you. But even if they don't, the big boss in heaven, Hallelujah. he knows what he's doing. 
love you all.